Sweden, all the way up to the border to Russia, is 2,576 kilometers. That means like same distance as going from Paris to Bordeaux, back to Paris and back to Bordeaux again, right? So, so our distances in Norway are much bigger than the distances you have in France. Yeah, the typical traveling distance for anyone going to work, I would, what I would expect is within the 20, 30 kilometer reach. Okay. And, and what I've seen in France uh, is that uh, the tremendous success of the TGV uh, has really connected France. So you don't drive like from Paris to Marseille. Uh, you don't drive the long distances. You take the TGV. Yeah. Right. Which then would mean, of course, that if, uh, then you have to think, you, have to, you really have to think new. And the question is, and that is, is what I'm asking you, is how important is it to own a car or to have the chance of renting a car where you need it. Yeah. Of course, if you have like, uh, you come to Marseille and then you still have to go to a remote village, then you have to have a chance of like renting a car. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. It's an uh, interesting point of view. Completely different than uh, what we thought in France, yeah. Because, yeah, I think uh, we don't have the, the high side of uh, the Norway uh, uh, life with an uh, electric car and uh, we don't think uh, because uh, in France we have maybe uh, when we are on the one year with a new car it's maybe just one or two percent of electric car then in Norway the last year uh, if you count uh, electric car and hybrid it's one uh, on two electric car I yeah, saw. yeah. We, had the, we had 60 percent of cars which are either hybrid or electric and it was like 25 or 28 percent of new cars sold are uh, pure electric cars. Right. And uh, the hybrid cars, I, frankly speaking, it's only, it's only a question of some years. Then people will see that the, the story of hybrid cars, it, okay, the big hybrid cars is still car is a status. Yeah. So if you want to drive a Porsche or whatever or a big Volvo, then you don't have a chance because the battery packs as compared to the engine is still a challenge. Okay. So, um, so in a way, if I understand, it's not just a fashion; it's a real, it's a real lifestyle. The electric, uh, electric car. I would say everything around electric uh, gets much more attention, and uh, yes, it's uh, it's about lifestyle. Okay. And what we see in cities is that the amount of young people who actually take a driver license and uh, is going down. And even those in a city who own a car is like completely disappearing because people choose alternative ways of transport. Okay. Uh, so in the cities. On, yeah. In the countryside, it's still that they own their car because uh, they have to go to to party, they have to meet friends, and that means going 10, 15, 20 kilometers to meet their friends. Yeah, okay. yeah it depends on the area where you, you live. Yeah. But oh, it's completely a revolution if you live in, the, in a big city. Yeah, okay. and what you, what you see now in Paris is like uh, the air pollution coming through it uh, is so big that uh, even, even in Paris, you are opening more and more up for making it pedestrian streets, uh, for, uh, for like cutting the car out, like yeah. along the Seine. I've seen these examples and I'm really amazed. Yeah, and uh, the objective of uh, 2025, I think, or maybe 2030, it's uh, to uh, have uh, only electric car in Paris and uh, not uh, engine, uh, not a uh, yes, thermal uh, petrol car. Yeah. yeah, and I think, I, I think it's, um, I, I, I saw a movie yesterday. Why haven't we seen the effect of climate change before? Yeah. Uh, and it's really so dramatic, uh, all what is happening out there, that, uh, and that you ask yourself, why haven't the managers taken care of it before? But then you have to look back and see that, okay, the car, man uh, the car managers, they were very happy with the neoliberalism, with no constraints at all, 
because it allowed them to simply continue in the same way and to earn a lot of money, even by lying, even by not cleaning up cars. I mean, we had the dis discussion back when we talked about um, uh, catal uh, catalytic conversion in the car exhaust, right? When they yeah. said, oh, we can't build it because it, it costs too much energy, uh, the car wouldn't go. Every car has a catalytic converter. The uh, same story with the, uh, with the particle filter. Yeah. Uh, it has never been, I mean, I have my old car is a, is a French Peugeot, and it has never ever been a, a question for me that if I buy a car, I want to have a particle filter, because I don't want to get these particles out. Anyway. Okay, I see. Um, yeah, so we talked about Porsche, but uh, here, uh, if you compare to other country like uh, Germany, of course, or France, uh, we see lo more Tesla than Porsche. But for you, uh, here in Norway, uh, do you compare a Porsche to a Tesla? And if you have the choice, uh, f uh, do you prefer to buy, uh, to buy sorry, uh, Porsche or um, Tesla? I, 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 would I would leave it to you with a practical example. That we go out, yeah. you put your foot in, in the electric car, you punch it to the bottom and you see an acceleration Absolutely. which even with the Nissan Leaf is like amazing. Yeah. So there is no discussion about Porsche versus Tesla. The reason why the Tesla is so damn successful is because it was an electric car with a big range, with a mm. high range. So people found out that by buying a Tesla I can actually skip car number two, I can reach with that car my hut which is mm -hmm. 300 kilometers away, in like one go. Uh, so yeah. so the, the, the real sales success of a Tesla, uh, as compared to other electric cars, has been that uh, you only need one car and it serves all purpose and you don't have a problem of going to your hut or to long distances. So that is, I, I think, the major story. Okay. Uh, so it's not, it's, yeah. Okay, um, and uh, for for you, as uh, the uh, twenty uh, twenty five objectives of Norway uh, is that, uh, if I could remember, to uh, uh, stop the distribution of uh, um, and, uh, petrol car. Yes. And uh, uh, in your opinion, is it con conservable? Is it uh, my, my take would be that. Uh, yes, no problem. It's the, the question is what do you do with uh, where do you put the hybrid cars, right? Yeah. So like Volvo said now, uh, Volvo from Sweden or now it's uh, Chinese, uh, they have said that, uh, okay, we listen to the people. We are not going to build any more pure petrol diesel cars. All our cars will be plug-in hybrid. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, so for me, it shouldn't be any problem of already reaching that by, well, frankly speaking, 2022. Okay. So in, in like three years from now, because there are so many models coming out to the market which succeed. But of course, the German car industry, they have just like, uh, what should I say? Uh, they have just like uh, bribed the government yeah, okay. uh, to get their big cars uh, continuing polluting. I say that being German, but I've listened to what happens with the German car industry and how big politics and uh, car industry put their fingers together. And like uh, you have this this example of um, the energy labels, right? That one was introduced for cars. Okay. And you know what? The Germans made it happen that the weight of the car was one of the factors. And as a result, the Leopard tank uh, gets an energy label of B in energy efficiency. I mean, get lost. A tank gets a label B in energy efficiency? That, and that is pure politics. Uh, but, but I think that uh, now, after this summer, I mean, first it was dry, then came the storm uh, these days, or, or yesterday and today. 
And uh, now, really, even the last people get uh, awake and see that yes, we have to we have to do something because this one will continue. Okay, I see. Okay, um, and for the Norwegian, are they proud to be the the leader uh, in this uh, in the electric car? Is it a, a proud? No, it it doesn't it doesn't mean anything for us. Okay. For us. Uh, like it's the, the story of convenience and it's the story of uh, uh, of yes we contribute to preserve our environment okay. so it's not that we have most electric cars of course if you drive 30 kilometers north of Oslo then you find the petrol station for Tesla's which is the second biggest in the world after one in California okay. because all Tesla's coming from the huts here uh, Uh, stop there okay. and charge their car before going into Oslo. Okay, yeah, so uh, you are more pro to preserve the environment than uh, to have a, to be a, the leader in the electric car. Absolutely. Yes. Okay, yeah, interesting. Um, so, uh, about Tesla, uh, do you think uh, will there be a new business mo model with, uh, like, for example, the virtual power plant? Because uh, Tesla uh, spoke uh, maybe three or two months about about it yeah. to make some uh, virtual power plant. We uh, we are already there. Uh, we just have to get the the right regulations in place because uh, the Charimo, uh, the DC charger on the cars, is already a two ways communicating uh, charger, and that one already allows you with an existing Nissan Leaf. Okay. Uh, to communicate and use the car as a charger. Uh, meaning that currently the models which I've seen are models where they say you can drive your car for free. Because what you do is you charge when it's low energy consumption, yeah. you decharge when it's high prices, and the difference allows you to drive your car for free. Okay. Uh, and of course, uh, frankly speaking, my car is old. It's like uh, almost six years old. Uh, no, wait, it's a 2011 car, and it's now we have 2018. So it's like a seven-year-old electric car. Uh, and uh, of course, I'd like to increase the battery capacity, because okay. my car is like, okay, I can go to the airport and back, <laughs> but then the car is like uh, almost empty. Uh, so I'd really like to have an idea of uh, having a bit more to okay. actually reach my hut. Okay. And I know that the, the same volume, uh, there's a company in Austria, Kneisel, who is developing okay. uh, a laser bind uh, um, cell connectivity. Okay. So they don't like solder, but they use laser to connect uh, the electric wires to the cells. And by that one, they get a package which is three times as high. So they have demonstrated that uh, where you, in old technology, you had like 22 kilowatts. Okay. Now the new ones are like 40 kilowatts, but they can reach 60 kilowatts. Okay. And in translation, uh, as I said, uh, 22 kilowatts is like 130 kilometer reach. Uh, 40 kilowatts is like 240 kilometers reach in the air yeah. and like 60 kilowatts would then be like some uh, more than 300 kilometers to put it okay. frankly and if you if you then say well if I uh, think about the new model where you say if I throw out the old battery put a new battery in let me say it costs me five six thousand uh, euros then I take my old battery put it into the house and having it as a buffer. Okay. The whole model works out pretty good, except that the car industry, of course, wants to sell new cars yeah. instead of selling new batteries. Yeah. And in an electric car, I mean, nothing can, uh, nothing can go wrong. Of course, you have rust, yeah. you have a uh, slight edge and all the kind of stuff, but those are only small things. Okay, I see. Yes, and uh, but um, I don't know if it's the same case here. But in France, I know that um, the people uh, who have some um, 
electric car, the battery uh, still um, uh, is uh, still the proper property of the company of the, for example, Peugeot. Uh, I don't know if it's the same case. Uh, I know that Peugeot, when they entered the market in Norway, had the same model. Okay. That you only lease like the battery. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, whenever something is new, you have to try new business models. Okay, this yeah. is an alternative business model to keep the price of the car down and rather have a lease cost per month. Yeah. Uh, hasn't worked out in Norway. So uh, these cars aren't simply on the market. Okay. Uh, no success at all. Uh, and, and so from that point of view, uh, in the Norwegian market, this one has failed. Okay. Uh, this business model. So, uh, but of course, Nissan, to, to yeah. give this example, has the strategy that, that yes, if my battery is gone, yeah. I get a new battery, but the old battery goes to Nissan. Yeah, okay. And that's one of the reasons why I don't want to change battery, because I know that the old battery has a high value for me in like a home storage. Yeah, okay, I see. Uh, because I heard about it too. Um, I don't know where is it, but they, uh, they want to, um, the whole battery in a car, they want to, uh, to keep uh, them and to um, store, to to uh, make big storage places. Uh, I think maybe it's yeah. uh, the hemp power project. I don't know if you have Yes, it. yes. Uh, well, you had like Tesla has in Australia. They yeah. have like installed this 100, what was it, 100 megawatt uh, battery pa uh, bank. I think it was 100 megawatts yeah. battery bank. And they said already they had expected a break even in four or five years. They got already a break, e a break even after two and a half years. Because uh, the, the fluctuation in the market was so much bigger yeah. uh, that they could do a lot more with it. Uh, I think, frankly speaking, I think that you can achieve much more by an intelligent energy distribution. Okay. Uh, meaning that you say, like, if I have, like, climate, uh, climate, uh, how do you call them? Climate, climate... Uh, um, Ah, air conditioning, sorry. Okay, yeah. Uh, if you use air conditioning, uh, you can like easily increase by half a degree or decrease by half a degree more when you have too much energy and less when you have too little energy. Now, it's only a very small uh, variation, okay. but if you would install it in every house, you would immediately get a much better control. However, it's the question of privacy then because you would have control of whatever is going on. So it's a, it's a very interesting time we are in to actually look into uh, how can I make a privacy aware distribution. Okay. But then again, electronics and computer make it so easy for us yeah. to sit in the control. So I'm, uh, it may actually happen the other way around, that it comes from the community which forces the big electricity companies to think differently. Okay, I see. I just check. Okay. Yes. Um, okay. Uh, so um, nowadays we speak uh, more and more about the autonomous car. Is it the same case uh, in Norway, or for the moment it's just a uh, focus on electric car? Um, you know, in autonomy we talk about different degrees of autonomy. Yeah. And of course, uh, the basic idea of autonomy of like, getting my hands off the, off the wheel and let the car drive yeah. to where I want, that is what everyone wants, clearly. Uh, when it otherwise comes to the autonomous car, I think there is a hype which is not uh, substantiated. And that hype is that people say, if we get autonomous cars, we get that less traffic in the city. Yeah. That's bullshit, because if everyone uses an autonomous car to come into a city, one person, one car, you get much more traffic jams. Okay. So the, the, what we are discussing here in Norway is to say that we should talk about autonomous buses, autonomous okay. small yeah. units, which collect people at their door, bring them to the closest uh, RER, metro, whatever station, yeah. okay. and from there on, coming to the city. 
Okay. Uh, and, and then the same distribution in the city, again, that you have a fleet of electric uh, cars who then carry you further. Okay, yeah. Uh, or small buses. And that is where I see some interesting concepts. Okay, yeah. Uh, so, autonomous cars, yes, but more as what I would call the edge distribution from the centralized uh, distribution grid. Okay, yes, I call it. Okay, I see. Uh, and um, do you think uh, will this technology also apply to other uh, other mode of transportation like boat and fly, like boat plane? Uh, train maybe. Yes, no. I mean trains, no problem, uh, because trains anyway have the wire. Yeah. So they are going on electricity. A boat, uh, yes. We are currently converting most of our ferries into battery uh, dr drive. Because in the, in the ferries, we have a pattern which is very predictable. A, B, A, B, yeah. A, B. Which means that uh, we have already some ferry uh, places which we have electrified. And we see that the success is tremendous. Because the time, even though it's only two, three minutes, is enough for high power chargers to get the batteries charged, to then get over the fjord again, to get the battery charged again. Okay. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, when it comes to bigger ships, like cruise ships, very, very difficult. But what we there try is to enforce uh, what we call... Um, Landström, which means electricity from land, when the boats are in the harbor. Okay, because yeah. we see like uh, lots of the NOx pollution. I think in Oslo it's 10 to 15 percent of the NOx pollution comes actually from cruise boats. And uh, Oslo and Hamburg are currently the only two harbors who have this electricity from shore. Okay. So when the boats are in, they connect to electricity. And, uh, but that standard hasn't been there. Now, when it comes to all the, the small boats, uh, we've been out with the small boats, uh, it's always the question of uh, weight versus efficiency. Yeah, okay. So, frankly speaking, uh, on boats, we, we may see it, we will see it. Okay. Uh, on planes, frankly speaking, Airbus is uh, making a solution which is not sustainable. Uh, so Airbus has, uh, of course, you always have to see it in, in two ways. What they talk a lot about is hybrid solutions, yeah. where they say that an electric engine is by far smaller than uh, a diesel yeah. or a kerosene engine. So I can make planes more efficient. But then the weight of transporting batteries up to space costs you so much energy yeah. that the, uh, the netto load which you okay. can put on top reduces. Okay. Yeah. So what I see is the Airbus concepts of like having air taxis to fly people to the, uh, the airport. I mean, that's not sustainable. Okay, yeah. uh, you can have the rich people being flown to an airport uh, but not everyone else. Everyone else has to come by train, yeah. full stop. There's no other way of solving that transport problem, not through the air. Okay. And of course, uh, these days, I would say it's really the global challenges. And the global challenges are globalization, digitization and climate change. Those ones are the ones we have to look at. And when somebody tells me that he can fly a battery, yes, of course, you can fly a battery. But that is like useless. Okay, yeah, I think. So I, I don't really believe from an, uh, from an eco, um, ecological point of view that uh, electricity driven planes, yes, there will be small planes, electricity driven, fair enough, but not on the bigger ones. It doesn't make sense. Okay, because uh, when I did some research, um, I saw that the Norwegian company uh, want to have the, all their planes uh, electrified. Uh, uh, I think the date is uh, the deadline is uh, twenty uh, thirty-five or forty. 
Yeah. So you think it's not the... It's well, I'm, I'm by education, I'm engineer. Uh, and then from an engineering point of view, uh, you have to find batteries which are at least 100 times as efficient as the batteries today yeah. to make that happen. Okay, yeah. And uh, if you look into, uh, into like the, the weight reduction in batteries, yes, we see already some increase, yeah. but it's in the factor of two or three. Okay. It's not in the factor of 10, and it's definitely not in the factor of 100. Okay. So okay. when we come with the batteries down in the scale to like 100, we may reach it. But then my second question is always the question of, uh, are we really able, from an uh, ecological point of view, to build these lots of batteries? Does it make sense? Or doesn't it make a lot more sense to look at the concept of uh, Hyperloop, where you may have heard about this uh, tube transportation, uh, where Elon Musk yeah. is involved, where you simply say, okay, I built a, a tunnel machine, which builds a two meter tunnel, yeah. not a 10, 12 meter tunnel as we need today, a two meter tunnel. In that two meter tunnel, I completely uh, surround it. Yeah. I make electricity-driven magnetic speed, and I can easily reach 1,000, 1,200 kilometers per hour, yeah. which, would, which would mean that Oslo, Bergen, yeah. 1,200 kilometers, 20 minutes. Oslo, Trondheim, 540 kilometers, okay, a bit more than an hour. And of course, you have in, in between stops, which you would have, so it, it reduces uh, the traveling time. But those concepts, from um, uh, a CO2 environmental point of view, make much more sense than the concepts which are thought about air transportation. Okay. Yes, because uh, in France we have the same uh, project between Paris and Marseille to reach by train with a uh, tunnel without uh, any hair. By uh, they want uh, an half, half an hour. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, that that would be really amazing, and uh, and I think that would uh, definitely make a breakthrough. And if we would get that from Madrid to Paris, to uh, Amsterdam, Berlin, uh, or or then of course, which I'm favoring to make the north trip from Oslo to Göteborg, Copenhagen, Hamburg, then then we are there. Yeah. But with this uh, kind of transportation, you can't stop uh, at each big city. For example, you can't stop at Montpellier, uh, Lyon, because you need to vacuum the air at uh, each stop. Yeah. And it costs uh, a lot. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. But I think, uh, again, these are, these are uh, if we would look in our research much more towards the global challenges and would look at the environmental aspects of what we do, whether it has a positive or negative impact on the environment, and then start discussing whether it makes sense to force research in that area or not. Okay. Then we would have a complete other uh, discussion. So if I would be Airbus, uh, then I would rather think about uh, using my technology, which I have for other modes of transport than just okay. sticking to the air. Okay, yeah, I see. Uh, my last question is uh, completely different than the other. It's more about sport because in the recent uh, year, uh, the electric motor has become uh, democratized uh, with its arrival uh, in some uh, category like Formula E and uh, more recently in uh, Rallycross. I don't know if yeah. you see. Yeah. Uh, 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 yes, uh, car competition really uh, famous in uh, Norway and Sweden. And um, for, uh, for you, it is just a thought to promote uh, the electric car and the electric uh, engine or uh, the future of electric uh, motor in competition is already uh, all insured it's just for yeah, it, for me one is difficult because uh, people uh, people like the sound yeah. uh, and the sound you don't get by electric cars yeah. so that's why formula e versus formula one but then again frankly speaking formula one is an outdying uh, species, yeah. it's like a dinosaur. There is no real, sorry, I, I don't see anything. And what you say is Enduro, 
no problem. I mean, I, I would really love to see Paris Dakar yeah. happening with electric motorbikes. Uh, but what I've seen is a friend of mine has built an electric bike here, yeah. and I've been on it, and the acceleration you get is yeah. tremendous. I see now in all the tracks, the ele uh, electric enduros okay. is a dream, because you get such an acceleration, and for the typical distances, uh, you are just jumping. But while we talk about, why don't we take the, the car key, okay. get out to the car, and you get... You have a driver license, right? Yeah, okay. And, okay. You, and you start driving. Okay. okay.